dear students today i am going to tell you more things about the sperm the sperm are first discovered by anton van leeuwenhoek in 1678 he is a dutch microscopist at the time he discovered the sperm he think that it is a parasitic animal that live inside the semen so that's why he named it as spermatozoa and uh, in those time he think that the sperm didn't have any role with the reproduction but later uh, he think that uh, that sperm itself contain a preformed embryo and as it contain a preformed embryo it is the determinant factor uh, that uh, determines the next generation and the egg has only a very negligible insignificant role but uh another scientist lazaro spallanzani in 1700 he bring out the importance of sperm in reproduction through one of his experiment what is that experiment uh, is that he uh, filtered the sperm out of the semen and using that semen uh, he tried to fertilize a group of toads egg he tried to fertilize a group of toads egg and he found that that semen failed to fertilize this egg as it is devoid of any sperm by that way he proved the importance of sperm in reproduction okay and later two another scientists like j l prevost and j b dumas they proved the importance of sperm or they uh, showed that the sperms are the active agents of fertilization and also they show that these sperms are absent in immature males immature males uh, are devoid of sperms okay and later another two scientists oscar hardwick and hermann fold in 1876 they bring about another important finding regarding the sperm and fertilization is that uh, actually the sperms nuclei is fusing with the egg nuclei and also during the fertilization uh, only one sperm is fertilizing an egg and uh, that fertilization is um, is very simple it is actually the process of fusion of sperm nuclei with the egg nuclei to form a diploid nucleus that is proved how they proved they experimentally proved that process using Sea urchin as the model organism. They use sea urchin. Why they use sea urchin as the model organism? There are some reasons. What are those reasons? First reason: the sea urchins are more common. And second reason is that uh, uh, it is easy uh, to locate. It's very easy to locate a sexually uh, mature. Uh, sea urchin throughout the year. Third reason is the more availability of sea urchin's egg availability. And fourth reason is the transparency. Transparency, transparency of the sea urchin's egg. But um, as it is transparent, it is very easy to observe the process that happening during fertilization. That is why they do sea urchin. And also they found that all the embryonic uh, nucleus, all the embryonic nucleus, embryonic nucleus that found in the embryo, uh, they are derived from they are derived from the nucleus that is formed formed as a result of fertilization from this nucleus itself all the embryonic cell derive its nucleus by the process of mitosis they also uh, that, that thing also proved by these two scientists oscar hardwick and herman fold Okay, clear. So uh, these uh, these are the names of uh, scientists that give important uh, important contribution uh, to understand more about the sperm. Next, we are going to see the structure of sperm. And on looking uh, to this picture, we can see the sperm consists of a head, neck, and tail. 
and it possesses a haploid nucleus. This is the haploid nucleus of the sperm. And next to that, we can see uh, a membrane is sac. Its name is acrosome. Acrosome. This acrosome contains so many enzymes, and this enzyme helps the acrosome. Uh, no, so, no, not acrosome. Uh, helps the sperm to pierce the X outer envelope during fertilization. And this acrosome is a structure uh, uh, believed to be evolved from. Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. And in most of the organisms during the maturation of the sperm, a majority of the cytoplasm is eliminated. But um, some organelles will retain in the sperm. And that organelles uh, really help the sperm to penetrate the X outer layers during the time of fertilization. And uh, during the time of uh, maturation of the sperm, its nucleus become streamlined. Streamlined means it will um, uh, um, make an appearance of a tightly packed appearance. And uh, during that time, is uh, the DNA, DNA that present in the nucleus also uh, highly compacted uh, for uh, um, making that process more easy. Uh, process means uh, that um, piercing the X outer envelope uh, to uh, facilitate the fertilization. And uh, um, actin monomers. Uh, what is actin monomers? Actin monomers are certain proteins that we can see between the acrosome and the nucleus. And what is its role? This actin monomers helps to form a process, a structure called the acrosome. Process. Acrosome process and it is a, an important part that helps the sperm to penetrate the egg envelope that we will see in next uh, coming videos of uh, the fertilization chapter. And what constitutes this head of the sperm? This nucleus, mainly the nucleus and the acrosome constitute the head of the sperm. And coming to the tail, uh, the tail is an important part that helps or uh, it give motility to the sperm to approach towards the egg. How the tail helps the sperm uh, in motility? Uh, by giving a whipping like action. For making that whipping like action, it needs a motor. And what is the motor of this uh, tail? It is the axoneme. I am going to show you a detailed structure of axoneme. Axoneme is a motor of the uh, tail of the spur. Uh, and it is a 9 plus 2 arrangement. A 9 plus 2 arrangement means centrally one duplex of microtubule is present and it is surrounded by 9 duplex. Uh, if we take the case of one duplex, that we can see here. Uh, it is composed of uh, two microtubules and among these two microtubules, one microtubule is complete and it is formed of 13 protofilaments. Filaments. But coming to the other one, uh, this one is incomplete and it uh, has an appearance of the letter C. And it is composed of uh, only 11 protofilaments. And each protofilament is composed of a protein called the tubulin. Okay, these are the uh, details regarding the axoneme, the motor of the uh, sperm tail or sperm flagellum. That helps the sperm uh, to have a whipping like action. And next thing uh, we need to understand is about another protein, a dynein protein. What is the role? Dynein protein is actually an ATPase protein. ATPase protein means it can hydrolyze ATP. And uh, in this
this structure we can see the dynein dynein's arm we can see in this uh, picture and uh, this protein catalyzes atp and release energy and using that energy this microtubule duplex slides each slides over each other and because of that sliding that flagellum bends and create a whipping like action uh, for the propulsion of this pot okay and from where this dynein is get uh, dynein is getting that atp for hydrolyzing it is obtained from the mitochondrial sheath that seen around or seen outer to this axonem axonem motor that uh, uh, mitochondrial sheath we can clearly see in this picture and uh, one more thing uh, regarding uh, one more additional structure that present in the sperm is the uh, fibers some fibers are present a fibrous sheath is present uh, where it is found it is seen outside to this axonem and in a to the to the mitochondrial sheath this fibrous sheath gives strength or stiffness stiffness to the uh, sperm's tail and uh, the thickness of this fibrous sheath uh, reduces gradually towards the tip of the uh, sperm's tail that's why uh, it looks thin towards the tip so uh, uh, that I, this is all regarding the structure of the sperm. I hope that uh, it's very uh, clear to everybody. Uh, with that, we, I am going to wind up today's section. Thank you.